Tonight, I'll be going into some of the workings of the mindsets of those who control the public because there are special minds, special types of minds and personalities that are chosen to rule the public and lead the public. And many of them are behind the scenes, of course, in big agencies, but many of them are also uh, on a lower level. They're, they're They're in front of you as politicians and advisors. Uh, and they, they know how the, the people think and tick, how we tick, you see, with our linear training. Uh, they're non-linear in their, in their attitudes. They do have psychopathic qualities. That's an essential to get up there, in fact, just like the CEOs of the biggest corporations in the planet, whose job it is just to make as much money as they can for themselves, first of all, then the company, and to make people buy products through their understanding of human nature. A nature which they don't share with you, but they understand yours very, very well. Because we truly are run by psychopathic personalities that are chosen by even better psychopaths or older psychopaths above them for the particular traits that they have. Now, psychopaths are fantastic persuaders and they have charisma and they're ideal for political jobs to lead the public up the garden path. Back after these messages with more. Hi folks, this is Alan Watt and we're cutting through the matrix now. You might find... The, the sound on the phone is a bit noisy tonight. That's because there's a storm coming across our BN station right now. And uh, you, it might come in and out. I might fade it all together. But I'll put up the show, remember, at cuttingthroughthematrix.com after I'm finished. I'll try and upload it through my wonderful satellite, ExploreNet, if they give me enough juice. And uh, that should be a clear enough recording. Getting back to the psychopaths, though. Uh, it's a fantastic area because uh, we probably all know or have met in our lives psychopaths on a lower scale, the con men who are always in and out of trouble, the low, the, the low type who get in trouble with the law. They have um, they either swindle people or con them, and uh, they're always very charming. Again, the same traits as the ones who are more intelligent. And they have a knack of being friendly to everyone. They can, put on a, they can be a best friend, in fact. That's how they come on to people. And they do it instinctively. They don't have to be taught this. They feel nothing, really. And the only time they take pleasure is when they themselves uh, have applause given to them to boost their ego, because they are completely egotistical. And it's always amazed me that after they've pulled something off and they're actually caught, the, the lower levels are caught, and lots of them are white class, uh, white uh, collar, I should say, uh, worker worker types. The, the most theft actually is white collar theft, and they get slaps on the wrist. Often they get off with it because they've suffered enough, because their dignity's been shattered and all that nonsense. But and the judge lets them go, and they probably go to the same golf courses, but uh, they they never stop. Their cons. And they're fantastic persuaders. Fantastic persuaders. They're kind of like chameleons in a sense that they look at you and automatically morph into what they think you'd like to see by instinct. They go into certain professions the cleverer ones, the ones with more education or they're born into families that are fairly wealthy. They go into different occupations and they do get placed in positions where they can really soar up to the top, especially in the corporate world. If they don't go into that, they'll go into politics. Again, easy money, fast in. And if you look at politicians, I don't know about the US, but in Canada and Britain and other countries, they often publish the record of these people when they're running for politics. And they'll show you that almost all of them have been bankrupt many times before, and, and they've, uh, they've got umpteen credit cards with so much debt and so on. Uh, these are the people who are running to get into government because that's where the honey pot is. That's where they can really score big 
with um, lobbyists paying them off and that kind of stuff and money under the table. And they can also help themselves to the, the big taxpayer honeypot, which they do copiously. Last night I mentioned one in England who broke out with a scandal because he was keeping his, his uh, rent boy lover uh, in another apartment. They're, they're allowed so much expenditure for their apartment in London while they're politicians, even though they've got houses all over the place. And this particular one was a multimillionaire anyway, but he's char- he was charging about £980 or something uh, uh, a month of the taxpayer for the second home for his little lover. Uh, and then they're using that money, it seems, to get us another home bought, a better one, because now that was a guaranteed little income for them. And this guy, as I say, was a multimillionaire. Because they get off on, on conning people and getting away with it. That's their thrill. Didn't need the money, obviously. But that's, that's the kind that goes into politics. And uh, there's a, an, uh, CBC did a, a particular documentary in May, apparently, on the psychopath. And it's called I Psychopath. This particular one was a corporate psychopath. And uh, I'll put the links up tonight on my show, com, And you can have a look at it yourself. But the write-up goes on to say this uh, from the paper, the CBC documentaries. Psychopaths, we usually only know them from Hollywood movies. We never expect them to enter our real life. But the psychopath is closer than you think. Experts believe their number to be as high as one in a hundred. I think it's more actually at the top. More of, most of them function incognito in high powered professions all the way to the very top. But it takes one truly to know one. In this intriguing documentary, Sam Vaknin, a self-proclaimed psychopath, goes in search of a diagnosis. In a scientific first, he allows himself to undergo testing to find out if he was born without a conscience. He knows he's narcissistic and cannot empathize with others. By his own admission, he's pompous, grandiose, repulsive and contradictory, ruthless and devoid of scruples, capricious and unfathomable. But he believes he's not a bad person. They all believe that. Actually, no matter what they've done, they believe they're not a bad person. It says uh, what he is is different. He couldn't care less, unless, of course, the topic is himself. So Vagnin and his long-suffering but ever-loyal wife, the Dija, embark on a diagnostic road trip, but it's unchartered territory deep into the mind and life of a psychopath. The 47-year-old convicted corporate criminal has agreed to take part in the pursuit of his own diagnosis. That rings a bell. I think it's been done before, maybe by the BBC a long time ago. So these experts put Vagnin and his wife through a battery of rigorous and psychological tests and neuroscientific experiments. And as I say, I'll put the links up. There's a video out there. You can have a look at it for yourself. And you should copy these things before they disappear, because things have got an awful habit of disappearing whenever I mention them. But getting back to, to what I'm saying tonight, and uh, I never prepare what I'm going to talk about. And things just sort of come at the right moment. And you can string things together that you've seen recently or whatever in your mind. But the psychopath, as I say, tends to get to the top by using other people. They've got a fantastic ability to get everyone else to work underneath them for them, sometimes for free. Uh, They go into the the power management positions very easily because they don't have to be taught anything. They know it already. They know how to manipulate people. They love the limelight, too. And so many of them are caught cheating. I mean... Britain is famous for, for, for this happening even right now. There's media um, exposures of different politicians and all the cons they've got up to in their personal lives, the rip-offs, how they've charged the taxpayer for the most frivolous things, uh, very expensively, of course, and uh, how they keep doing it. And we'll always get the same type going into politics. That's the type that gravitate towards power and money. It's a magnet to them. And the art of conning people. I can remember... Tony Blair. I mean, Tony Blair is a classic psychopath. And even in his interviews, I read one on the air here, where he was interviewed after he left office as Prime Minister of Britain. And he just casually mentioned when, when they talked about the Iraq war and stuff, he says, oh, he says, he says, that hassle, and then just skipped over it. And he was asked if he had any regrets for anything he'd ever did. And he said, no. Well, that's a classic reply 
from a psychopath. They, they have no regrets for whatever they do. And there's an article here on Brian Mulroney, who helped to ram the, the uh, NAFTA treaty through. And Brian Mulroney was a Prime Minister of Canada. And a few years ago, he, someone, he was accused of uh, taking uh, bribes, uh, kickbacks. Uh, a book came out about it, in fact, as well. And because of it, he sued the Canadian government, and he won. And then it comes out now that actually they were right. He did take the kickbacks. And they're asking him to get the money back from him that he got from the taxpayers for winning his case. This article here is pretty standard. It's former Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney sits before the House of Commons Ethics Committee in Ottawa in December 2007. Justice Geoffrey Oliphant found Mulroney violated the ethics code that guided parliamentarians and says the former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney won a $2.1 million libel settlement under false pretenses and the Conservative government should force him to repay it, Liberal leader Michael Ignatius says. Ignatius called Tuesday was echoed by the New Democrats, they're a bit further left than Marx, and Bloc MPs, all of whom have jumped on the findings of a federal inquiry into the Mulroney the Schreiber affair to renew calls for the former Tory leader to pay or repay the out-of-court settlements he won back in 1997. So anyway, it was all to do with uh, a big deal the government was paying for. See, big money, and you realize that this big money goes out in federal contracts and purchases, and, and they were buying uh, all these aircraft for Air Canada. And... Um, there were kickbacks to Mulroney. And, and a man came up to Schreiber and said, this is a standard procedure. We bribe people uh, all the time for contracts. The general public, being naive, think, yeah, the government puts up tenders and people put in their bids and the best person gets it. That's not how it works. No, they all put in their bribes. The ones at least that are chosen to, to possibly get the job. The ones who do it honestly will never get a contract coming their way. But Brian Mulroney also, as I say, he helped ram through the... He ran to get into governments um, as the head of the Conservative Party by saying he was not for NAFTA, that that was a precursor that led up to the... to the or, or the free trade deal that led up to the NAFTA negotiation. But after two weeks that he was in, he changed his mind and suddenly he was a proponent. He was, in fact, he was a leader for it. Cretin did the same thing after him. He had run against it to get in because he knew the taxpayers didn't want it. And uh, when he gives in, he became the champion as well. See, they're all psychopathic. But Brian Mulroney did tell the truth when he was out of politics in an interview with the CBC. He, he was asked if an after that he'd really rammed through and signed and so on, if it really would be good for Canada. And at the time he'd, he'd said, uh, when he was pushing it, he said, oh, it was the greatest thing and we couldn't survive without it. But on the interview, when he was out of Parliament, he said, well, to be honest with you, I, I don't really know. He says, time will tell. So they can be honest, you see, when they're off the hook for something and they're not going to get, it's, it's over and done with. It's like rapists as well. They can be very clever and very clever. And when they're caught, uh, they like to brag to the press what, how clever they were and how they did it. It's the same MO. They're psychopathic, you see. And we run by these crooks. This is the system that they basically rule over. And they look after each other because they all have so much dope on each other, I mean blackmailable stuff, uh, that they all have to stick together and cover each other. The last thing they want are inquiries into anybody near them that might lead to them. I'll be back with more after this break. Hi folks, I am Alan Watt. We're cutting through the matrix, talking about the ones who rule over us. And the psychopath gets into positions of politics and bureaucracies. Bureaucracies are great too. They can hide out there and become the heads of departments, which uh, are theirs, their, their own domains. They can rule over them and they're not accountable to the public. But they love to compromise with other agencies and other countries at times as well. And they also... Uh, work with uh, basically 
international organizations because everything brings money to them and status and more titles and all the rest of it. They're in everything. And they also get to the top, of course, in, in, in the police departments and security departments and so on. It goes on and on. This system, and I've said this forever, was really uh, theirs. This is their system we live in. We're brought up in it. And don't ever underestimate them. They'll often say in some reports they're not too intelligent, and they'll give you different examples. Uh, but but they, there's a lot of them that really are intelligent. They're creative ones as well. They're called creative psychopaths. And they certainly do understand society and how to manipulate people, whole nations, if necessary, and no doubt the whole world. They get to the top of the media. Uh, they decide in their little clubs what you're going to believe, think, and what you're going to chat about. And they're very, very good at it. It works very well. They get into the business of uh, um, ordering movies to be made along certain themes or novels to be written along certain themes. There's so many ways to get ideas across to the general public because, after all, if they're the predators, they want the prey to be nice and easy and to believe the things they're told to believe, even if it comes through fiction, which a lot of it, actually maybe most of it, does. And they're ruthless. They also have tirades of pure aggression when they're challenged about something. Utter aggression, especially their, their pets, uh, pets uh, perversions and things like that, which they, they tend to go into. A lot. And indulge in things because they don't follow the rules of ordinary people in any area at all. They live for thrills. I've read reports so many times when uh, new governments are elected to Canada and other countries where they have a big party for the new elected representatives and politicians, all the guys with the the bankrupt credit cards and so on. And they trash the places, utterly trash them, and leave them like dumps, like garbage dumps, and vomit and everything all over the place from the wild parties. Because they don't live in the same ways, to the same standards as we do. But they demand that we live at certain standards to please them. You know, law itself is simply a matter of coercion. Again, if you go into the, the topics that we talked about the other night there, about how the, the, you're controlled uh, through psychologists and behaviorists, uh, they see themselves that, that uh, uh, law really is simply coercion. It's how the public perceives the law. It depends on the type of coercion they will use. If we believe it's a, if, if the law is just or the legal system is just, we tend to obey all the laws, even if they end up being crazy or bad for the public. So they have ways of presenting it to the public, never for the true reasons, but always for, for their own ends, to manage, control the public. 9-11 has been the greatest, greatest thing that ever happened for them to bring in their whole worldwide martial law because one country and one, well, one city actually, or two blocks in a city were attacked. Two towers were attacked. And people still cannot see that's kind of odd. Uh, countries have been attacked before, but the whole world didn't go into a, a martial law mode all at once at the same time and take all the rights away from their peoples and tell them you have no rights nor privacy from now on. That's because, you see, the psychopaths have worked for many, many years at the tops of the countries, organizing the future for their world order, you see. There was a good book written about psychopaths, and it was Ponerology, political Ponerology, uh, and the author did take do studies on psychopathic personalities from the Soviet side, on his own leaders, very quietly, because he knew what the consequences would be if it was found out, the group that was involved. Uh, but they also compared them with tyrants of the past and the tyrants that they saw in the West. And they found they were all the same personality types, psychopathic. And the conclusion they came to was that uh, we are living in a psychopathic system. It's their system. We are here to please them. We are the prey. We are the sheep, aren't we? They're the predator. Or they might say they're the shepherd, being the good psychopaths that they are. 
They love terminology to cloud the, the issues or re- to cloud the reality of it. And so therefore, they said they always give you two. Ultimately, when there's so many of them at the top, uh, a psychopathic culture, which the people themselves, although not psychopaths, will emulate. And out of it, you come corruption, dog eat dog, debasement, and all morality. And we're living in it now. This is too many of them at the top. Back after this break. This is Alan Watt. We're cutting through the matrix. Remember, too, as I say, uh, there's a storm going across our BN station right now. So if the reception's poor, um, look into my website, cuttingthroughmatrix.com, at the end of the show, and I'll have a clear version put up there for you. We're talking about psychopaths and how we live in their system. And as we get towards the unification of the world, it's getting worse because, you see, there's more and more of them now all working together to make all of this happen. Uh, The heads, the CEOs all want this to happen. They want to control the public across the whole planet uh, with their environmental scams and get us paying now for taxes. We're a great psychopathic con of global warming nonsense and carbon outputs. We'll all pay individually just to live to these psychopaths, you see. Beautiful con out of the minds of psychopaths. And, of course, the Club of Rome were the guys given the task to find how they could bring this about. They came up with the idea that blame global warming and then blame man for causing it. So we exist from their viewpoint to serve them. And we have a use for them. That's all they see in you. You see, it's a use. Psychopaths have no other uh, affinity with you. You're useful to them. If there's too many of you, you frighten them because they know what they're up to and they're always a little afraid you might find out. So they like to keep you down to certain numbers. That's why in the past, great kings and so on, who were generally called great because they slaughter people every so often, were psychopaths, and that's what they were doing. They did kill off a certain amount of their own numbers at times to make them feel safer. I'm going to give you an instance here, for instance, of Britain, with all of the scandals and, and, uh, about the expenses, scandals, mul- millions and millions of pounds getting ripped off the taxpayers for these scam politicians' uh, expenses and their accounts. There have been so many mentioned in the last year or so, and there's so many more coming all the time. He, he, and yet the people in Britain are so apathetic because, you see, the Sunstein characters that go into countries and like they do with little groups that form. Remember, I read that article in the papers where Sunstein, who works with Obama now, and Harvard University, and behaviorists. Uh, Sunstein said, if you want to get rid of a group that's causing a problem, you infiltrate them, you put points across incognito from Internet, that kind of stuff, and you you gradually, uh, what you do is you take the fights out of them by making them question their causes in the first place till they're not sure of anything anymore. Now, how did he know this? Well, you see, the same behaviorists have been using the sciences on countries for a long time, whole countries, not just little groups, to deculturalize them, knocking down your basic religions, the things that made you come together as a people, your commonalities with each other, and how the system worked for you all together. And they break it apart and break it apart. And bingo, now you're ready to join the whole world without much of a protest because you, you're apathetic. You're saying, well, what, it, what does it mean to be British or what does it mean to be Canadian? That's in the papers today, in fact. What is a Canadian? That's, that's, a, that's their favorite one that they start off on and gradually convince you there's no such thing. And the same with the U.S. as well, you see. Sunstein took techniques. He's working right now with Obama, doing more of it, and a lot of his cohorts too. But here's Britain here, who is totally deculturalized. Remember, I read the article from Tony Blair, uh, from his his assistant, his secretary, who was told uh, we're going to destroy the, the, the whole culture of Britain so that when they leave, he leaves politics, they could never go back to being 
a sort of uniform culture with a tradition or whatever. And that's happened very successfully. It wasn't just him, of course. They had a whole bunch of psychopaths helping him and specialists. This article here is from Mail Online. As they're all ripping off the publics, they've been losing their homes like crazy. It's the same, same in the U.S. and elsewhere, too. They've got this massive debt to pay because of psychopaths and they're really dealing, dealing in the banking profession. Yep, psychopaths rule that because it's all chronology. It's all, banking's all chronology. U.K. families face the highest inflation in the Western world as the food prices rocket and the pound plunges. That was the 2nd of June. Rising food bills have driven Britain's food bills, right? Your food bill, your basic stuff, has driven Britain's inflation rate to the highest in the Western world. The UK's consumer price index figure of 3.7% is two or three times higher than similar economies across Europe and beyond. New figures from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, interesting organization to look into, by the way, because you tax fund it, and it all works through the United Nations. Every country has got their department sent over there. Great retirement place for politicians to work. Suggests British families are suffering far more than counterparts across the globe. Then they give you all the stats here for different countries and show you how bad Britain is. And it's burgeoning bills. It says the food inflation rate in the country is about 2.8% compared to 1.2% in Germany, 0.8% in France, 0.7% in Belgium, and so on and so on. So, you see, that's what they've done to one country that doesn't know what it is anymore. They don't know what they are anymore. And they're all trained to watch the TV all the time with their awful uh, fictional programming that's debased them to a level they've never ever seen before. And, of course, they emulate what they see, you see, in their own personal lives. Psychopaths know that, too. That's why so many of them go into acting and become producers as well. And... You follow that up with this article from the Mail Online. And it's 2nd of June again, same same day. Snouts, that's your noses. Noses in the trough after civil servants soaring pay. They get themselves a 20% rise in their bonuses. Now, the country's broke, falling apart, uh, but they're all getting bonuses. They give themselves bonuses. Thousands of Whitehall mandarins, there you go, mandarins, they don't call them czars, but they're mandarins over there, saw their bonuses soar by up to 20% last year. That was despite repeated pledges by ministers, to crack, that's politicians, to crack down on public sector profligacy. And it follows yesterday's astonishing revelation that there were 172 senior civil servants who earn over 150,000 Pounds. I was reading it yesterday. There are 250,000 pounds, some of them earn, and so on. And, but they've given themselves a 20% rise in their bonuses where everyone's losing their homes and they can hardly afford their food. You see, there's no end to the greed of the psychopath. Some of them are more intelligent. They'll try to string it out or get loans to, 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 to tone it down in countries. And they play that loan game as long as they can, rather than let the public know how bad it is and have them all in a riot. Mind you, they've also prepared for rioting under the guise of terrorism. They knew all the stage would come one day, you see. And that's interesting, too, because the Queen gave her a speech there. And by gum, she says, Britain's going to go so green. It's, that's the way the future, going green. And then she asked for a £6 million pay increase. No problems asking for that one, for one of the richest people on the planet, for waving her hand. That's the world. This is the real world that we live in. It's run by con men and women, and they, they have the art of conology. Now, conology, as are all good cons, needs participation on the victim. The victim must fall for them. They must like them, in fact, and they do. You can like your abuser because they're so darn charming at times. When you're in the the presence of a politician and you're a voter and they fix eyes on you, you're the only person in the world. That's how you'll feel. And you'll be so blushingly grateful to them when they go into politics uh, that you'll stand by them until, unless that vision wears off with reality coming through. Sad statement, but that's true. 
people participate in their own demise. And they've been trained by specialists again in behaviorism that special people and experts should rule over them. That was the Bertrand Russell and the Macy Group philosophy. The people were too ignorant and stupid to rule themselves, so we have to do it for them and teach them how to live, teach them how to behave, and to produce and all the rest of it and do as they're told. And that's the society that you have today. And society is, is so much like that, that no matter how bad things get, when a new psychopath is introduced to be a leader to them, and they always sniff which way the wind's going, and they will become your leaders. They will, it doesn't matter what, what side it is, they'll think, well, they can sniff the one that's going to win, and they, they get to the top. And you fall for it again. I promise to make things nice for you. I promise, I promise, I promise. And that's all they have to do is recognize your pain. And you do it again. And then you bend over for the next four or five years. And that's your fault. Because you don't learn. They used to say once bitten, twice shy. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Because you never learn. You keep doing it over and over again. When these characters come up and say, I promise. Tony Blair used to go to workmen's meetings for Labour Party. And he would stop his car outside their buildings. And he'd take out a shirt that was not white. uh, Put it on and roll up the sleeves and walk in to meet the labouring class, the working class. Everything is an act and it comes easy to them easy to them, and they're all the same. George Bush went in there as as some guy with a southern accent, and he's from the East Coast his whole life. But that's good enough for the people. They even built a fake ranch from from like a Hollywood set because they hadn't built one from down in Texas. That was still under construction. But that was good enough for the press and their photo ops. They didn't tell you that, did they? Everything is showbiz for the public. Everything is showbiz for the public. Some peoples have more psychopaths in them than others. That's also in the book Ponerology. You should read it, read it through. Political Ponerology. Very ex- excellent expose. It doesn't go into everything. I wouldn't agree with them on everything they say either but uh, they do present their studies of the commonalities of the psychopaths who get up to the top in their system because it is their system. And how they're very good at bending your perception of things into the way that they want you to perceive how things are. They go into the professions of creating new types of um, wordings for you through advertising. A lot of them, are, by the way, are great up there in Madison Avenue in advertising. To give you your little slogans like change is good. Until you're all chanting change is good. And nobody's got the brains to ask. Could you define what changes you're going to bring down? It doesn't occur to them. It doesn't matter, does it? And then they're always astounded when they get into office. And they go off on some different tangent altogether. Always astounded, never learning, eh? never learning. And politicians can only, if they get in for four or five years, if they hang on for the fifth year in Canada and the so-called British dominions, or commonwealth, as they also call it, and maybe in the States too, if they, and even in, in, in the provincial, which is like state government, they get a lifetime pension for five years, work five years attending. Index related to the cost of living, whatever it may go up to, it will always go up to match it automatically. Drug coverages you can't imagine. Hospital care and military hospitals, especially for them, but not for you, because they only spend $48 million telling Canadians how how wonderful our health care system is. That's pure propaganda on television, rather than put it into actual service for the public. Because perception wins over fact. To most people. 
And be very, very careful who you follow. Be very careful. You see, the whole idea of being an individual on this planet is to not only be an individual or become an individual, but stand up for yourself as an individual. Once you start following, you're going to get led up the garden path. As I say, the psychopaths gravitate into those positions. They're men for the sea. They are, they are, men, they are the man for all seasons. Whatever the, the time is, they'll find the cause. They'll already be starting and they take it over. And then they lead you up the garden path, the Pied Piper. I've read articles where those who are into the neurosciences, which are also related big time to behaviorism and psychology and how they're using this from all the top departments all down on you, even through your media presentation on mainstream and how they can literally guide hold peoples along a certain path so the next day they know they're all talking about what they told you to talk about. And they even take polls on this all the time to make sure you're all talking about what they give you to talk about. And when they give you a new leader that's going to get the last bunch out and so on, they'll, they'll tell you who he's named. And all this nonsense about them, a fictitious character is built around them, a personality. And you swallow that too. And then you think, and, and you see this, it's a salesman's pitch. A salesman will come up to you, he's well trained. He'll take a glance at you. He'll emulate the way you're standing. If your arm is here, his arm will be there too. And before you know it, when you're chatting, you'll feel like you're best friends with this person. You don't realize he's mimicking you. Even what you, how you reply to things with a uh-huh or okay, or he'll do the same things. And he's mimicking, he's mirroring you back to yourself. So you feel so comfortable. And he'll do all this stuff before he makes the sales pitch. And you'll fall for it because now you feel so friendly with them. You have a guilt trip to back out. And that's what leaders do as well. They know what's being said out there because all these teams can pay millions of dollars to, to, to grab all this data, what the public want. And they'll tell you what you want. And they'll say, this is what I want. And you fall for it. And of course, in a system where psychopaths create the system for themselves... They don't ever give themselves clauses in any legal uh, documentation that you can boot them out when they lie or for found not to fulfill their promises or even attempt to. Why should they change their system to suit you? It's not for you. And then there's other psychopaths too who, if they weren't in certain jobs, would be out there raping on the street and murdering people. Instead, you put them in uniform, put them at the top, give them authorization to do so, and they love their work. Back with more after these messages. Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and we're cutting through the matrix talking about psychopaths really because you see they gave us the system it's been here for centuries and centuries and they tend to work together different groups of them even different cultural groups if it's all to their own benefit and uh, of course in a world society they've got the whole world to play with and so they have to cooperate at this level as long as they all get their good shares of the massive profits involved but um any excuses is good enough to get their agendas through, like the guys at the Club of Rome, psychopaths again at the top, who uh, were given the task to find ways to unite the planets and to get people to live more austerely and uh, to get them to really fork up more cash to their masters. And they dreamed up the idea of man-made global warming. That would fit the bill, that's what they said. They looked at other aspects that they could have used, but they came up with that one. That would fit the bill, they said. That's their own words in their own book, The First Global Revolution. And, but there's lots of them out there at the top of the think tanks that manipulate societies. 
Uh, look at the war we're in now, the nonsense. Utter nonsense. We know they were going into Afghanistan before 9-11 happened. The troops were mustered. It was already written down by the project for the New American Century Group. Look into their own website. They've got good links there to a lot of stuff, and a lot of good books came out of it, too, all linked to them as well. Uh, it tells you who was in it. A sort of agreement between two different peoples to bring it off. And it was done. And Ben Laden nonsense, we all saw that stuff. They go to no, there's no, there's no lens they won't go to to fool the world. And that's how a con is done, you see. The bigger, the better. Adolf Hitler said that. The small lie they catch. Something that's so huge they can't believe anybody would possibly do that. Because you see, most folk are not psychopaths. And you, and you don't. How, how could people do that? You can't imagine. And Ben Laden, remember too, when the inquiry came with uh, George Bush, he says, Oh, I never said uh, that, um, uh, when he's asked about Ben Laden, he says, uh, he says, well, it doesn't matter about him anymore. It doesn't matter. Because he was out with the news by then. It didn't matter. You see, the, the objective had already been achieved. They were in the countries they wanted to go into. When it came to Saddam Hussein, he says, oh, I never said Saddam Hussein had anything to do with 9-11. Utter lie. He used that when it was suited him to go in there too, to grab all the oil and stuff and take it over. And there's no doubt about it, they worked uh, with alongside the same agenda with Israel. Israel wanted those countries as well, as did the members of the New American Century. Tied at the hip. But here's it, here it shows you how, how cavalier it is today. This is from uh, Yahoo News. British Airways are red-faced over a fake image of bin Laden boarding pass. Now, they're screaming at this wonderful new boarding pass for this fly-through customers, you know, we approve people. So this, in their own internal magazine, they put this article here. It, says, it just seems like a bad time for any firm with the word British in its title. We know too well that various setbacks experienced by the oil giant once known as British Petroleum, now British Airways has drawn much unwelcome attention to itself with a photo touting its new mobile boarding pass system as it appears to expedite air travel of Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. Somebody had a sense of humor inside the organization, and no one really noticed. It was published and everything. The photo appeared in LHR News, the company's internal staff magazine covering London's Heathrow Airport. The image accompanied an article spelling out the benefits of the mobile boarding setup, which permits users of mobile digital devices to print out their boarding passes on the fly. The pass reads Bin Laden Osama and appears in the graphic panel of a user's iPhone AT&T reception in remote Pakistani caves as apparently better than anyone might have guessed. And no one noticed, because no one has got a memory or a thought process anymore. But at least someone had a sense of humor. From Hamish myself from Ontario, Canada, it's good night to me, your God, or your gods go with you.